Hi friends, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about Azure Landing Zones. So this is a video which is more related towards architecture and design. Wherever you are moving into cloud, there are certain things you need to complete in order for you to have a proper minimal viable product available to you in cloud. Landing zone is part of that infrastructure design. So when I talk about landing zone, what exactly is landing zone? If you see my screen, you can see a landing zone is an environment for hosting your workloads through pre-provisioned code. So it basically means you deploy or create your code and using that code, you are creating the base or the foundation of your overall infrastructure that you're going to deploy in Azure. So when you talk about landing zone, think of it like you're building a house. When you build a house, you have to lay the foundation of the house. You have to think about the blueprint. This is where my living room is going to be. This is where my washroom is going to be. This is where my kitchen is going to be. Very similar to that, you have to think about where your different application components will be placed in Azure when you're designing these landing zones. When you talk about landing zones, these have basically five pillars that we focus on. So when you talk about five pillars, we focus on identity management, networking, governance, security, and management. So these are the five pillars you focus on whenever you are creating your landing zone. So when I say landing zone, why do we need a landing zone? It helps you to create a scalable and a modular design. Okay, so it is scalable because there are components that you can always increase or decrease in a landing zone. So whenever you're talking about landing zone, you want it to keep it modular. For example, if you have a new application deployed, so what you can do, you can just create a modular component of that application and it can be deployed within your environment. So the scaling and the modularity of this environment really helps you to design a very good architecture on Azure. Now, if I talk about these five pillars in detail, you can see when you say that uh, what kind of uh, areas I need to focus on. If I talk about networking, some of the areas you can focus on when you're creating a landing zone is you can think about connectivity, your quality of service. You can think about routing or routing. You can think about firewall. You can think about IP addressing. How should I plan my IP addresses so that all of my workloads are properly assigned those addresses? You think about your demilitarized zone or DMZ where you will be deploying your firewall or any other network virtual appliance to secure your appliances. So you define your networking areas. This is just a small list, but you have to think about all the things that you need to design for your network before you actually deploy any infrastructure into it. Then you have identity management where you think about single sign-on, role-based access control, how you're going to assign different set of rules to different people within your company. You're going to think about authentication rules, your user and group design, how many users need to be created, or will they be cloud identities? Will they be on-premises identities? Or they will be hybrid identities? How do you want to invite other business users? All those things are thought of in identity management. Then you also think about governance. Governance is involved in all the phases of migration as well. So you need to think about the compliance and the policies you're going to implement. You need to think about subscription and management group management how you're going to design the overall hierarchy within your environment. All of that is part of governance. You also need to think about the security pillar. Security is paramount in all the areas wherever you deploy Azure resources. So you have to think about threat detection, built-in protection, data security. How do you encrypt data at rest? How do you encrypt data in transit? All these things are thought of in the security pillar. Then you have management pillar where you think about monitoring. How do you continuously monitor those environments and how do you optimize over time? How do you build a resilient, resilient solution? So if you have an application deployed in one region, how do you make it highly available by deploying similar components in a DR region? You have to think about automation. How do you automate the, the updates or the patches that you want to deploy on your VMs? All of that is done using automation pillar. So when you talk about landing zone design, there are a lot of components you need to think of whenever you're making these designs. Now, in order for you to see this in action, 
you can understand in enterprise scale architecture how a solution architect is going to design a enterprise scale solution so if you see over here there are various components in this architecture design so if you see the first area is enrollment of your subscription in this enrollment of your subscription you are going to think about how do you want to get the subscription either you talk to microsoft and if you are a large enough enterprise you go for a enterprise agreement with an enterprise agreement you get a separate portal called ea.microsoft.com and using that portal you can create your department structure your account structure and all the subscription that are part of the that department so the overall management for you becomes really easy if you create an enterprise structure like this then you also design your identity and access management solution how will you basically create your users how will you design your audit reporting how will you configure mfa what will be your uh, approval workflow how are you going to check the access of your users all of that design is part of identity and access management so when you're designing your landing zone this is enterprise scale but for your company if you're just starting out on azure maybe you're going to leverage some of these components maybe not all components will be leveraged by you but over time as your company grows you will basically incorporate these designs into your architecture as well so you have these options you also think about hybrid identity by deploying azure active directory and connecting it with on premises active directory then you also have management group and subscription structure so in this design you can see you have a tenant root group created over here and let's say your company is a contoso company whatever your company name is going to be you're going to design the hierarchy for the same how do you design the hierarchy you're going to think about management group structure your subscription structure or uh, you you're going to think about your business units so you have marketing department you have sales department you have it department and for all those departments do you want to do a consolidated billing if you want a consolidated billing you're going to manage the bill over here but let's say you want to decentralize it each department should manage their own policies they should manage their own billing you may create multiple management group in that case maybe you create management group based on subscriptions or your environments like dev test production or you maybe you create management group based on different business units so for marketing department you have some folks in us some folks in india some folks in australia you want to create different management group for each of those locations so your management group structure is also going to be depending dependent on how your company is going to manage these resources you also create quite a few management group for your landing zones as well so if you have sap you have a uh, corp applications or some other online applications you definitely create some management groups and some subscriptions inside those management group where your workloads will be actually deployed you also create some platform related management group to manage identity uh, management of your workloads and connectivity by using networking of your workloads as well so you create multiple subscriptions inside these uh, management groups and then you design each of these components separately on a different subscription so if you see over here we have a identity subscription where you deploy all of your domain controllers you deploy you configure your rbac you configure your policies all those things related to identity are part of this module similarly i have a separate module for my management groups or management subscription in this i will basically track my monitoring i will deploy a centralized log analytics workspace you can deploy a centralized one you can deploy a decentralized one and you can manage all of these things over here you can create automation accounts and you can do change tracking update management inventory management all of that can be done from here security subscription where you manage all of your networking related components like if you want to deploy hub and spoke topology you want to use virtual van you want to use access route connection to on premises all of that is managed in connectivity subscription so if you look at it basically we are designing a modular environment so that each component can be always maybe replaced or updated very easily you're not dependent on one component if you feel like you need to change some identity subscription you can always create a new subscription and maybe add those roles and services to that new subscription and you can always make modifications to it plus the overall scaling for this is going to be very easy for you 
For example, if you see, you have a landing zone over here. Landing zone is nothing but it is the area where you actually deploy your applications. Just like you build a house, you lay the foundation of the house and then you build your application architecture on top of it. So you create a blueprint and using that blueprint, you design where my application is going to be, where my other services like recovery services is going to be, uh, how I am going to allow the different components to talk to each other. All of that is part of landing zone. For every application, you may create a separate landing zone. So this is first landing zone. Maybe you want to test out some things in subscription. You can also create a second sandbox landing zone as well. And in this, you will have all of your application architecture related things deployed over here. Now you also have a sandbox module which helps you to basically test out some features before you actually deploy it to production. Also, you have some DevOps area where you can also create continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. So whenever you're designing your whole overall architecture, this modular design of a landing zone is what helps you to configure all of these things very quickly. Now, if you want to see this in action, you can go to this documentation, which is Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, which gives you all the best practices you can follow in order to move into Azure. Or if you're already on Azure, what you can do to improve the overall architecture design for yourself. So if you see over here, it will tell you or it will show you all the areas that can be covered uh, in order to design a proper strategy on how to move to cloud or how to improve or optimize your workloads. You can just go through this documentation in order to understand that in detail. But now we are just going to focus on landing zone. So if I go over here, there's actually a page for landing zone. And in this landing zone, you have a template available to you, which is called as landing zone accelerator. If I click on deploy to Azure, it basically takes me to this page where it gives me template on how to deploy a landing zone for your environment. So it gives you an ARM template. I can edit this template and once I edit it, I can define or change any of the values. I can change the parameters, which are nothing but user defined values, any variables, anything that is going to change within your template or is, is going to be different within your template. You're going to define that in variables. And you can see around 73 resources are being deployed from this template. So if I want, I can always modify this landing zone accelerator. And once you modify this landing zone accelerator, you're able to modify these settings and you can change any of the settings that you want. So I can define my deployment settings. And over here, I select my environment where I want to deploy this architecture. I can also select the project where I want to deploy it. I have to select my tenant scope over here and you have to assign appropriate permissions. All those permissions are part of this documentation. You can always see the documentation and the permissions on this page. So once you have deployed this, you can also look at your Azure core setup. So you will think about what will be my prefix on my resources. Do you want to have a dedicated subscription or you only want to work with one subscription? Usually dedicated is recommended. If you want to send some data to Microsoft, like customer usage attribution, you can always sign up for that. And Microsoft can basically see if you're using or utilizing these different landing zones properly or not. If you don't want to send any data, you can always disable this. Then you define your platform management, security and governance on this accelerator. So you define how your log analytics workspace is going to be designed. Is it going to be centralized, decentralized or a hybrid model or a mixed model? Where basically a central team manages some of the components and your application team also manages some of the components. You also define different agents that will be deployed. So all of the security related, all of the management related agents are shown to you over here. If I want, I can also incorporate CI CD pipelines in my design. So if you go to platform and automation, it basically gives you opportunity to uh, basically deploy a CI CD pipeline over here. If I go to network topology, it gives me options to deploy a hub and spoke model or a virtual van model where I'm utilizing a SD-WAN solution on cloud. Similarly, you see components related to identity. And once you fill out all these details, it basically deploys this infrastructure within your environment. But you have to be careful if you deploy the infra infrastructure, there will be costs associated with it. So make sure you're only utilizing whatever resources you require and definitely optimize the architecture so that you're only deploying the resources that are required for your company. So once you click on review create, you will be able to deploy it. 
So that's all about landing zones. See you in the next video.